Welcome, this is the study guide for the Calculus Chapter 2 free response portion of the test. Find the derivative of the following function. Uh, you must sh show each step of the process, at least four, probably six or more. All right, so remember, finding the derivative of the following using the limit process is the critical point in this one. You must show me the limits, and you must use the equation, the limit, as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, That is the, the equation I expect to see. So, the limit. Remember, this is composition of functions. You learned it in Algebra 2. We went over it in trigonometry. So, f of x plus h. Everywhere there's an x, I put an x plus h. Minus f of x. All over h. All right, now, I have to get a common denominator. Right now, if I said h equal to 0, I go to infinity. I've got a 0 in the denominator, can't do, undefined. So, I have to figure out how to do this and get rid of that h in the denominator. So my first step is to create a common denominator in my numerator to not make it two fractions up there. So I'm going to have 4 times x plus 6 minus 4 times x plus h plus 6. All this is over x plus 6, x plus h plus 6. And this, oh shoot, I forgot the limit. Limit as h approaches 0. This is all over h. All right, so this is now equal to limit as h approaches 0, oh, well, we distribute the top. 4x plus 24 minus 4x minus 4h. Remember that negative has to distribute. All of it distributes. Minus 24 all over h. Well, now a bunch of things in the top will add to 0. A positive 24 and a negative 24 positive 4x and a negative 4x. So now I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 4h over h. Well, the h's cross out, and I now have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 4. Oh dear, no, that's not right. I forgot that that's not over h in the beginning of this line. This is actually still got that denominator. Come on, program. There we go. Uh, x plus 6, x plus h plus 6. But if I multiply top and bottom by 1 over 8, the big denominator goes to 1. So it can go away. And that puts h in my new my other denominator. So now I have this equation. Alright? So now I have Okay, I gotta erase this other bit. Sorry. Close, but not quite. Alright, now I have negative four h, but it's over h times x plus 6, times x plus h plus 6. The h's cross out. Now I'm going to be able to plug in that 0 for h. So this is equal to negative 4 over x plus 6 times x plus plus 0 plus 6, which is negative 4 over x 
plus 6 squared. Sorry, that's a squared. All right, so that then is my derivative. All right, I don't expect to see any other writing. I just expect all of this. You don't have to put it in a sentence at the end. The rest of the questions you will. All right, projectile is shot upwards from the surface of the earth with an initial velocity of 146. So V sub zero is 146 meters per second. Position function is S. Show all variables in each step. What is the velocity after five minutes? Five seconds, sorry. Okay. S is sub zero is the initial height. Well, it's shooting off the surface of the earth. So we're going to say the initial height is zero. It's right sitting on the surface of the earth. So now I can say that S of T is equal to negative 4.9 T squared plus 146 T, S sub zero being zero. Now I know that the velocity in terms of T is equal to the derivative of the position function, which is S. All right, so the derivative of that is negative 2 times 4.9 is 9.8t plus 146. So now the velocity at time, oops, time 5, time 5 seconds, is going to be negative 9.8 times 5 plus 100 and 46. I'm going to put that in my calculator. Calculator to open. There it is. All right. So I have negative 9.8 times 5 plus 146. I get 97. Write out your answer, your final answer, in a full sentence. So, the projectiles velocity after five seconds is ninety seven meters squared per second. All right, that's the answer I'm looking for. Right circular cylinder. All right, so we have a right circular cylinder. It has a radius R and a height H. So what do we know? We know that the radius is the square root of 4t plus 4. Its height is t to the 6th. This is all t in times of, uh, t is time in seconds. Uh, find the rate of change of the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so the volume equation is the area of the base, pi r squared, times the height, h. So in our case, the volume in terms of t is pi square root of 4t plus 4 squared t to the 6. So this is equal to pi times 4t plus 4, oops, times t to the 6. Come on. There you go. Plus t times t to the 6, which becomes pi 4 t to the 7 plus pi t to the 7. 
Okay. Now I can find the derivative of that quite easily. So v prime change in velocity is, so I bring the 7 down front. So I have pi, well, actually, let's put the pi second. Okay, 4 times 7 is 28. So I have 28 pi t to the 6 plus 7 pi t to the 6. Well, those 2 pi t to the 6s, so I have 28 and 7 is 35 pi t to the 6. That's the velocity at time t. Okay, they're not giving me a specific time, so that's my answer. Now we have to use it. I have a sketch. We've shown the steps, all my formulas. Answer in a full sentence. Now notice this is inches per second. Okay. The volume of the cylinder is changing at a rate of 35 pi t to the sixth. Um, we gotta put our, our uh, units there. Inches, no m in inches. cubic inches because it's volume, inches cubed per second. All right. Now, number four. Suppose a centimeter pendulum moves according to the equation z theta. Okay, so we've got our pendulum. Pendulums usually have a little weight at the end in order to make them swing properly. Okay, and it's swinging up, swinging both directions, right? It's a pendulum. And if you guys ever saw Pit in the Pendulum, it's one of the scariest movies I ever saw as a kid. So this angle is our theta. We know that theta is equal to 0 0.2 cosine 8t, where theta is the angular displacement. And t is in seconds. We have radians and seconds. Determine the rate of change of theta. So theta prime, 0 0.2, the derivative of our cosine. So for those of you with the chain rule, my f of x is cosine x. My g of x is 8 um, x, 8 t. So this is going to be g of t. is 8t. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'm going to put negative out front, sine of my g of t, which is 8t, times the derivative of 8t, which is 8. So 8 times 0.2 is negative 1.6 sine 8t. All right, determine the rate of change of theta when t equals 9 seconds. So we plug this in and we get negative 1.9 sine 72. Make sure you remember your calculator should be in radians. All right, mode, check my radians. Yes, I'm in radians. Negative 1.9. Where did I get 9? It should be 1.6. That should be 1.6. I think I just copied the 9 from above in my own head. One negative 1 negative 1.6 sine 72. And it gives me a, an answer of negative 4.5. 
4061. Round it to four decimal places. Okay. So this is radians per second. All right, so what's the, the answer, the sentence? Angular displacement. So the pendulums angular displacement theta is negative point four oh six one. I see my I didn't get the point in there. Radians per second after uh, nine seconds. Okay, so now we're moving on. Implicit differentiation to find the equation of the tangent line to the ellipse. All right, I don't like the denominators, so I'm going to multiply through by those denominators to get rid of them. I'm going to have, so if I multiply through by 200, I'm going to end up with 100x squared plus y squared equals 200. Now, if I take implicit differentiation, the derivative of the first term is 200x. The derivative of the second term is set to y, y prime. The derivative of the 200 is 0. All right, notice they want to know at what time. So at this point in time, I'm going to plug those numbers in. So I get 200 times 1 plus 2 times 10 y prime equals 0. All right, so this gives me, I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides. So I have 20 y prime equals negative 200. So now if I divide both sides by 20, I get negative 10 is y prime. So this then is my slope. So my equation is y minus 10 equals negative 10x minus 1. And that is my final answer. Okay, so I need to write a sentence, although this doesn't exactly say so. Okay, it doesn't say a full sentence, I'm not going to give it a full sentence. All right, so that's my answer. Number six, all edges of a cube, cube include a sketch, show each step, all formulas is in correct notation, and answer in full sentences. Okay, so we make our parallelogram here. We drop the verticals. Okay, another parallelogram. This is my box. I drop a vertical there, and I give it the other side of my box. Yay! Okay, each side, each edge, we'll call S in length. So we know that all edges of a cube are expanding at a rate of 4 centimeters per second. So that means that S prime is 4. How fast is the volume changing? when each edge is 3. So S is 3. So the volume per second, so it's over time, is equal to, well, a volume is S squared. So hang on, let me rewrite that better. The volume in terms of S is S cubed. Volume of a cube is the area of the base times the height of any rectangular prism. Area of the base is S squared. Whoa, sorry about that. There we are. Um, area of the base times the height. That's what I've got, S cubed. All right, 
So what I want is V prime of S equals S, sorry, does not equal S, it equals 3S squared. Okay, so 3S squared S prime. So we want V prime, no, not of S, sorry, of 3, because remember we said S is 3. Of 3 is 3 times 3 squared times S prime is 4. All right, so now I have V prime of 3, which is what the question is asking, is 27 times 4, which is 108. All right, so now full sentence. Volume of the cube is growing. You could also just say changing at a rate of 108 centimeters since it's volume cubed per second. Yeah, per second. Okay. When one edge is three centimeters. Alrighty, that's it.